radio enthusiasts field of dreams this weekend yesterday was 6 10 day i guess now mike would you say it's 6 10 weekend something it's, like that it's our weekend yeah that's yeah. what i would call it. Yeah. it it dovetails with um the uh 23rd american graffiti uh festival and car show here in modesto california yeah. the um the background on that, if you don't mind if I do that. No, is that, no, I haven't even um, introduced you yet, but you go ahead. You take the no. show. Well, hi. Hi, how are you, folks? Ladies um, and gentlemen, Mike Novak. <laughs> hi, Mike. Ooh, is he here? No. Um, <laughs> George Lucas, Mr. Star Wars. Mr. Yeah, you American went to school TV. with him. I did. Thomas Downey High School in Modesto. And they celebrate uh, the kind of the 23rd anniversary of the American Graffiti. It wasn't just a film. That was my life. I raced Friday nights, Saturday nights, up and down McHenry Avenue in Modesto, California. That's what that film was all about. Okay. Now, so I heard you talking about this on KFRC less than an hour ago. I'm dying to know what kind of car did you have? A 1969 Plymouth Roadrunner with a Hemi in it. Um, in fact, I found what? two of them here at the car show already. What color? I had a silver one with black interior, yeah. and I purposely ordered it with nothing power. I wanted all of the power going to the rear wheels, and it was really fast. It was really fast. Are you going to tell Sherry that uh, you're kind of looking around? She knows I'm looking around, but she also gave me orders about don't come home with a car. I said, okay, I won't. So. Oh, let's, let's kind of bounce around a little bit. Where is home for you these days? New Braunfels, Texas. Um, when I retired from K-Love in December mm -hmm. of uh, 2018, um, I had been married to Sherry for a year, and she's a born and raised San Antonian. And I, uh, I had pretty much had it with California, uh, born and raised here. And, Seems uh, to be so, a, a growing trend of that, Mike. Yeah. Yeah, it does. A lot of a lot of people move into Texas from California. But so we moved to San Antonio and about three years ago, two and a half years ago, we bought a place in New Braunfels, which is just a suburb of uh, San Antonio. Mm -hmm. And um, I uh, I am a uh, law enforcement chaplain with the New Braunfels Police Department. Oh. And yeah, I love God bless love you. It. That's incredible. Yeah, I uh, I really I got into it when I was still with Caleb in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. uh, worked with several of the departments and agencies up there. But uh, when I moved to New Braunfels, I met the chief and uh, went through the process. And uh, I've been doing it for a couple of years now. I love it. Uh, okay. So, uh, you know, I think I'm up going to be up to five listeners here on my station, Mike. So, you know them by uh, name? I, my, yes, you, Mike Novak. You ought, so, you ought to get their names. Yeah. yeah oh, absolutely. <laughs> so I'm going to kind of take you back. For those of you that have been in San Diego a long time, you're going to remember Mike from B100, KSON. Did you work anywhere else here? No, those two. Those two. Okay. And you were you were my boss at B100 for what? A couple of years? Yeah. Almost yeah, three years. years yeah. Something like that. But you're better known, as you just mentioned, now the retired CEO of K-Love at Air One. Uh, Mike, it is a tremendous testament to your hard work, your organization, your motivation skills for everything that you've accomplished in your career, especially when you got to K-Love. Uh, going by my notes here, said when you came on board in 07, they had 600 stations in 45 states. When you left, they had over 800 stations in all 50 states and streamed worldwide. Yeah, actually, I started there in 1998. I became the CEO and president in 2007. Okay, um, got it. I was I was there almost 21 years, and yeah, it's um, you know, Gary, the, the it, it's a testament to God, not to me, and and I say that because I didn't do that. We didn't do that. Um, we did what He equipped us to do, and we certainly tried to take advantage of everything that he put, you know, put before us, sure. but he opened so many doors for that ministry that, that could not have been opened otherwise. Um, I remember specifically um, after we purchased our first station in New York city, flying there for a meeting and being in a cab near times square and listening to K-Love. And it struck me that it was like, holy mackerel. K-Love is in New York city. And from you talk about humble beginnings up in San Rafael, 
Um, my good friend, Bob Anthony, is the one that started it. Um, I was at KYUU in San Francisco, and he was at KFRC, and he came to me one day and he said, I really feel like God's telling me to start a contemporary Christian version of uh, KFRC, in essence. And I said, yeah, well, good luck with that. And uh, I was a station voice. It was not called Caleb then. It was called Spirit FM. Was that 1982? uh 82 or 83 yes yeah, yeah. that's why there's conflicting birth dates one was spirit fm and one was when it was finally named caleb which wasn't for several years later okay and in 1998 uh we had a bible study at our house and a lady had a little newsletter sticking out of her bible and i said oh what's that and it was the caleb newsletter and bob's picture was on it and the next day i called him and it went just like this hello Bob, it's Mike. When are you coming to work for us? <laughs> and I said, yeah, well, nice to talk to you too, Bob. <laughs> Get on a plane and fly from San Diego up to Sacramento and let's talk. And I didn't leave for 21 years later. Um, yeah, let the, me real quick. I want to go over this. So in, because I, I took my notes, 82, somewhere around there, voice of the station, 98, <laughs> air talent program director, network <clears throat> program director, vice president of programming, senior vice president, the president and CEO. What a that climb. Was it. What, that what was a climb. It. And it was a lot of it was OJT, too. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm a kid from Modesto, California. Right. What am I doing? Yeah, you're from the valley. Yeah. I'm the valley boy. Yeah. Um, but it was, it, it all worked. Yeah, uh, here, here's, here's where it turned around for me. I had been there about three or four years and I honestly was driving home. I did afternoon drive. I was driving home one evening and I was picked. I was arguing with God and I was going, what have you done? Why am I here? This is awful. You know, I mean, it, uh, everything I could say without, without using bad language, I was just arguing with him. I didn't see a burning bush or a freeway sign, or I didn't hear anything audibly, but I got a sense of peace. And the peace came with this. You know, everything I let you do in mainstream radio, all of those just outrageous things that I got to do on behalf of the radio stations. It's going to be school for what I'm gonna ask you now. And that's when it took off. It wasn't very much long after that I became all those things that you said. Up till that point, I was just on the air and I really wasn't doing much, but it just went boom, 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 boom. And everything that I had done, thought about, learned, tried in mainstream, I used at K-Love and God just blessed it. He yeah, just blessed the socks off that place. It certainly has that sound. It, and, and to update it, um, I got a call from, uh, I, I retired in December of 18, and I got a call from the new uh, CEO um, maybe two weeks ago, and he said, I'm sending you a little memento, because back timed it to when I left, they now have a thousand radio stations, and according to Nielsen, um, 16 million listeners a week, and Gary, I can tell you, you talk oh. about a, a, a faith move. I can, I can vividly remember Friday nights standing at the front door, praying that we could make payroll on Monday. People walk into Caleb and they go, whoa, look at this. And I go, no, 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 you don't understand. This is not how this thing started out. It was right. literally bubble gum and bailing wire. Right. Um, and, and a lot of prayer, a lot of prayer, everything we did, every acquisition we ever made had more prayer behind it than actual data. Um, and God opened doors and he closed far, far more. Um, there were some deal and, you know, and it was kind of interesting too, as the CEO to say no to another Christian entity, they didn't get that at all. And I would go, I'm sorry, he, he's just not moving on my heart. You know, it just, it right. doesn't feel right. right. And they would go, well, you know, you obviously aren't paying attention or something, but um, I believe God, well, I know God has his hand all over that ministry. Oh, absolutely. So what's next in life for Mike Novak? Um, you know, I'm just kind of taking it easy. I'm, I, I do the, the law enforcement chapels thing. I love it. 
my main job is the uh, mental and physical well-being of our officers. Um, I go out with them a lot. I ride along. I put on my bulletproof vest and uh, we go 120 miles an hour down the street and, you know, wrestle around with people and stuff. Um, my attitude about it is when I'm in the right hand seat, my job is the same as his or hers to make sure we both go home. And um, I the, the thin blue line is very real. And there's a reason for that. The cops don't necessarily trust a lot of people because they only deal with people that lie to them every time they open their mouth. Absolutely. Rightfully so. So you have to gain their trust. You have to gain their, um, their you have to, you have to, they have to know that you have their back. And with the um, advent of being a chaplain, a licensed chaplain and a minister, I'm bound by confidentiality rules. Unless they, they tell me one of about two or three different things. I, I, I don't even tell the other chaplains. And once they realize that in the course of uh, spending a 10 or 11 hour shift in a car with them, they begin to talk. And that's when you get to know them and you can minister to them. Um, I do not talk about God unless they want to. That's not mm -hmm. what I'm there for. Right. Um, you meet it, them where they are. Absolutely. It's not rocket science. Yeah. Uh, done a couple of weddings, uh, which was a real privilege for me of yeah. officers. Yeah, it was cool. I it bet you're cool. really good at it, too. Uh, I don't know if I was or not, but it's legal. So <laughs> I oh, worried okay. about that, man. I kept calling the, the county and going, are you sure it's okay if I do this? You know, I'd hate to marry someone and not be uh, be legal, but it is. I'm, I'm an ordained minister and a chaplain. So, um, but it Obviously, obviously, Gary, the, the biggest thing about my 21 years at Caleb is what it did to me and through me and how God used me. And, you know, his timing is perfect. The first always. thing I always thought about was, uh, gosh, I wish I had done this sooner, but it wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have been time. I ha I'm one of those kind of people that uh, I kind of have to try it my way. And after hitting the ground a couple of times, I went, okay, I'm done. Uh, what yeah. do you have? You know? Yeah. And you know what I mean. And it, uh, and it, it just took off from there. It just took off. I like what you said, what it did to me instead of not for me. Oh, yeah. It, it, yeah. He didn't do anything. That, that's interesting you would hear it that way because that, that really means a lot to me. Um, well, and you don't, you don't hear it ever. You, you, you have you have to do the work absolutely you know, god doesn't just tap you on the forehead and everything's rosy and that doesn't mean i haven't had problems or anybody else of course or you or anything of else course. it just yeah. means that you you know the light at the end of the tunnel is not a train coming at you it's where you're moving toward um it gets you through the most insane times the most intense times um and and that's what i hope to pass on to my sphere of influence currently, you know, my family and, and the officers. I'm on the board uh, in San Antonio of a unique um, a, amusement park, I guess you'd want to call it. Mm -hmm. It's called Morgan's Wonderland, uh, morganswonderland.com. Okay. Um, the CEO is, uh, his name is Gordon Hartman. He had a, a, and his wife had a daughter, she's 27 now, who was born uh, with some severe mental challenges. And with mental came physical, of course. Well, she knew enough that she wanted to go be with other kids and stuff, but there was nowhere to go, nowhere to take her. So he created a theme park, but he took it one step further. It's meant for kids with any sort of uh, disability that you can think of, plus their brothers and sisters and family it's an inclusion not an exclusion right. um and i'm on the board of something they just opened up it's called morgan's wonderland camp um where kids can come camping and the thing i mean i, I couldn't even go into the amount of detail that he came up with and what he found was that there was there was no plug and play he actually went and made or had made most of the stuff that they use at the park because nobody was doing it. Sure. Um, he called a, a gentleman from overseas to come over and build a um, electric wheelchair that goes underwater. And they did. Really? He, made, he made six of them. 
Um, yeah. But it, a Ferris wheel, a zip line for wheelchairs, um, oh. seven or eight different pools of different temperatures and different slopes and different, um, you know, this and that, because every kid is different. Some kids can't stand cold water. Some kids have you know, too much hot water. Um, there's a gymnasium. Well, the first thing they had to do was figure out a way to uh, diffuse the light because bright light bothers some kids. They had to tone the sound down because loud noises bother a lot of young folks um but it wasn't so bad that the brother or sister who thank god didn't have any disability can't come and play basketball because they can and it's 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 great i i really encourage you to look it up morgan's wonderland.com it's in santa they have visitors from all over the world uh they keep track of where people come from and they it there's one other sort of like it and i'm not sure exactly i think it's somewhere in the midwest but it's not as complete as this one this one he just he started from nothing and just made it wow hey well you sounded great on the radio today you were one of the original boss jocks kfrc right yep yeah and uh, the guy I interviewed bobby ocean he was there with me um it's really funny he ended up back in modesto living here which was my hometown yeah um and uh, so he we we caught up on and off the air and he's just a joy to be around he was uh he was certainly one of my mentors coming along. I was the young kid. And uh, I, I just, you know, I, I hope we conveyed that on the radio. KFRC, like, like other radio stations, was just fun. It was right. just fun. It was done professional and it was done yeah. with purpose, but it was fun. And that, you know, I, I believe you and I did the same thing at B100. We just yes. had fun. We had fun. Remember, remember yeah. music, music, money, and fun? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, that you know, a, a little side note about Bobby Ocean. He uh, was a big influence on me and, and one of my, don't tell Shotgun Tom, okay? But one mm -hmm. of my huge inspirations um, and my, my new radio station, The Voice of San Diego, he's the voice of it. He's my imaging oh, cool. guy. I have, cool. I have never met him, but we talked on the phone. I wrote him a couple letters. I said, you are the first disc jockey I ever saw on television. <laughs> and I thought, gee, that's what he looks like. You know, you know they'd always say to yeah. us over the years, you don't look like what you sound. Yeah. What does I, that I don't mean? know what that means. What, what does that yeah, mean? Does that mean I look bad, sound bad, both? <laughs> or right? both or what? Well, no, you sounded great. And uh, oh, I just have fun. You know, I'm, I'm blessed all... to be able to do it. How this has gone full circle is, is truly amazing. It's yeah. nice to see you back broadcasting live from the Sturgeon. So you're, you're uh, on again. If, if, on... if I can give a little plug too, actually, yeah. my first rock and roll radio station, Kino in Fresno. Yeah. I'm back on the air there. Um, you are? I do. Yep. Nine to noon uh, daily, Monday through Friday, nine to noon. Uh, I do it from my home in Texas. Yeah, and uh, you know, with the advent of electronics, you can be anywhere in the world. Can I get and you? To, you can I get you to do a couple for me as well in San of Diego? Course, of course. I'd How, love fun. To. How fun! How fun! Just let me know. I, I'll help you any way I can. Um, you remember one of my cohorts at KFRC, Eric Chase? Yes. Eric's name when he was at Kino was Harry Miller, and he's doing six to nine a.m. So Harry and I are back on the air together at Kino. Oh, it's cool. It's fun huh. to do. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'd forgotten how much fun it was just it, being on the radio. I, I had this conversation with my wife, Stacy, yesterday in the jacuzzi. And, and I, I, I said it this way. And then I thought, well, oh, maybe it's a little rough. But do you think to a certain degree, radio is a, an addiction? In, 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 in a good way? Yeah, I, I would say I, just the entertainment factor of it is, I think. Yeah um you, you you know as well as i do there were a lot of people in radio who if you met them on the street they weren't the same oh no you're, exactly. you're the same you're exactly the same i hope i'm the same yes, bobby's the same um I actually think you're much ones... better you're much better looking in person than you are on the radio <laughs> well you just need a new radio that's all um i i, I just think that those people that were who they were and not copied someone else were probably more accepted and more comfortable in their own skin. Mm -hmm. And um, you know who else was really good at that back from the B100 days was Danny Romero. Oh, yeah. Um, Danny was Danny. I don't care what 
time you put him on the radio or met him at a restaurant, Danny was always Danny. And that's what, right. that's what drew me to him. He was just such a real guy. Absolutely. Mike Novak, you've done it all. And I know God's got more for you in the future. Thank you for helping our law enforcement. I have the most respect for our military and our law enforcement I'd love to hear about your family, but I know we only have so much time because we go back a long, long way to the old Scripps Ranch days mm -hmm. when you lived in the condo and I lived down the street. Yes. Yep. Mike, thank you for your time. God bless you. And I really appreciate you being on. Can you do me one last favor? Sure. Can you tell, the, tell people the radio station that they're listening to you on right now is the voice of San Diego.com. Can you give me a little radio it's thing? It's easy. You want to hear this. You want to hear more from Gary. You want to know what's going on in America's finest city. The voice of San Diego.com and run it all together. Just voice of San Diego.com. You will love it.